Welcome to Rational English. This is going to be a very different kind of show today, and I'm joined at the table by Sarah Rosinski. Sarah, welcome to the table. Thank you so much. We're going to talk about your book, talk about the English language, but first, let's start off in Boston. Okay. <laughs> okay, because I know you know Boston well, and I used to live just up the road from Boston. So you were doing stand up comedy. I did. I did. What on earth got you into that? Honestly, no one's ever asked me that. The answer is this I came up with an idea when I was in college that I thought would enable me to travel. Ah. I thought, I, if I did stand up comedy, I could be a stand up comedian on cruise ships. <laughs> And I could, <laughs> that, that would be a way I could travel. So that's where the idea came from. And uh, actually, it's not a bad idea, to be honest with you. Although, from what I understand, doing stand-up comedy on cruise ships is a terrible thing to do. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got to have seven, eight, 14 different shows. There's that, and then you're also trapped with your audience. That's correct. You cannot so, escape them. Right, so... Um, <laughs> Anyway, so then I began doing open mic nights. Uh, I was in Boston and there were a lot of opportunities to right. get stage time. So I did it as much as I could to a compulsive degree. Do you think you were fairly successful, very successful? Here's did you make people laugh? Oh, I did. Good. I did, yes. Um, and I, no one ever threw anything at me. I was never booed off stage. So I think actually I was pretty successful. Most excellent. Um, yes, but I, it, it was never my primary source of income. So. And you enjoyed it? Yes, and I recommend it. It's, it was a terrific uh, opportunity. You, there's, I, I just loved it. But I've got one funny little story. Um, I used to live in Huntsville, Alabama, which, oh, wow. is, which is why our producer always says I come from Alabama. And they have a comedy store there, and uh, I was on a trip over here, and they all took me up to the comedy store, mm -hmm to watch a comedian, and the comedian made the biggest mistake he ever could make. He picked on me. Oh dear. Oops. I got more laughs than he did. So, what made you leave Boston? Because Boston is such a beautiful city. It's a wonderful city. It has wonderful food. It has wonderful culture. <clears throat> it has incredible winters, as you know. As I know. <laughs> um, I won't go on and on about this. There were a few considerations, but, but there was a very bad winter that uh, propelled my husband and me and our young daughter uh, to head south to Florida. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. okay. so you went from the sublime to the ridiculous. We did. Absolutely. We did. <laughs> How did you find Florida? Uh, and don't say you just stayed on the same highway. I was about to <laughs> ask. Um, oh, gosh. My response to that is a complex one. There's no place like Florida would be my answer. Especially um, today. It is, it is sui generis, one of a kind. So you, you, you went down to Florida, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, here you are in Colorado. Yes. What made that move? Well, it's related to what you were just asking. How did I find Florida? Ah. My husband found Florida to be worth leaving. <laughs> so, a bit like a bit like myself in Alabama. So, I don't, you know, no offense to any Floridian uh, viewers, but anyway, essentially, one summer when we were living in Florida, and Florida was sweltering, miserable for more reasons than I can list here. He went, he came to Colorado for a visit and absolutely fell in love and essentially said, I'm moving to Colorado, I hope you'll come. <laughs> so, I, and so we packed up and yes. And here you are. Yes. And you live here in town, don't you? In Longmont, yes. Yes, yes, well, welcome. Now, you've done the comedy thing and all of a sudden I'm looking at a book mm -hmm. with a title Using a word, I, does that word actually, say that word again. Unflubbify. Okay, and if I put that into Google, what does it tell me it means? It says, buy this book. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I, this is what you call a neologism, I guess. Uh, I made, made it up um, because every other title of a book similar to this has been taken. Okay, and, and what does the book go into? What is it about? Yes. English is filled, as you know, with confusables, uh, words that have completely different meanings, same spellings, 
similar. They sound the same. They're spelled differently. It's impossibly difficult. There's so many pitfalls, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So uh, this is filled with little mnemonic lessons that are fun to read and memorable that will help people avoid those easy to make mistakes. Okay, and of course that's more aimed at people that are, are learning English, or do you think it's even for English speakers? Oh no, it's for all of us. Okay. <laughs> even oh, for me, I still use this book. Okay. Yeah. When I say English speakers, I, I do mean outside of the UK. Because uh -huh. as far as I am concerned, <laughs> you guys speak American, you do it's not speak thing. English. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> So this is to, to help people understand the way the language is built? It, not so much. This is a uh, group of problematic situations that we have all probably encountered. The okay. word complement with a pair of E's in the middle versus complement with an I. You know, if, yes. you, if you're talking about a complimentary yes. uh, gift or something. Or making a compliment. Uh, making a compliment. It's going to be spelled differently than a salt and pepper shaker that complement one another. At least they're spelled differently. They're spelled differently, right. So anyway, um, there are many things. There, there are words in here that people say, I didn't even know there was a different spelling. You know, forego can be spelled two different ways. Yes. And a lot of people don't even know that, so all that. That's kind of interesting. And of course, sometimes you never know whether it's one word or you should break it into yes. two words. That's and, in and, there too. And things keep changing all the time. Yes, and, yes. Oh. they do. And that's, that's an important point. This book will not probably be any good in you know, 10 years because things will have changed. They change all the time. That is the yes. nature of our language. Well, that's the thing. That's the good thing about English. It's a living language. Yep. Have you ever looked into why spelling got changed when the language came across the pond? Well, I mean, to your point, to what we were just saying, it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. So when, when groups of people diverge and then they're talking to one another and using the language in their circles, it's going to change to reflect their use, right? So right. Um, I guess that's my answer to okay. that question. Um, I know that Webster tried to simplify English, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why we oh, have color good. with only the O-R instead of the O-U-R. Right. Center, E-R -R rather make than R-E. Right, he was trying to make it make sense, and that's generally proven to be impossible. Yes. Um, yes. Good intentions. Yeah. The reason I asked was I always smiled up in New Hampshire, or New England, in fact, because you see a place name, mm -hmm. except the spelling had changed mm -hmm. from the original in the UK. And I always found that funny. Okay, you're on a boat for five weeks and you forgot to spell the <laughs> town that you came from. Great. And pronounce it. I mean, there's, <laughs> in New England, there's so many kind of British, you know, Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah. How do you say that over? Worcester. Oh, same thing, okay. Worcester. Where I get upset is, is say, Hampshire. Notice, notice I said sure at the end. Mm -hmm. In the UK, we pronounce it sure. So it's Hampshire. Okay. Dorsetshire, not Shire. Mm -hmm. It's a Shire horse. Okay. But that's not how we say our counties. Oh boy. Yeah, it gets confusing, doesn't it? Does. It does, it does. Yeah. The funny thing is when you, when you grow up, you don't really think about this. You just learn right. it. Right. But I've heard that English is probably one of the hardest languages to learn. I would think it would be very hard to learn, or at least very hard to write correctly. Maybe just communicating, getting your point across, you can probably do pretty well. But if you're trying to not make mistakes, it right. can be really difficult. How many times have you picked up something that says made in China, you turned it over to read the directions and end up on the floor laughing? Oh, it's wonderful. Some of them are absolutely yes. incredible. There are Twitter accounts that will keep you in stitches. Yes. And you look at it and you go, have they never heard of a proofreader? Maybe they have a proofreader who's not very good. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Could be. Could be. It, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. What are some of the biggest quirks that you think you found in the English language? Oh, golly. Every day it's a new one. I, uh, yesterday, I think it was, I was <clears throat> sharing the lesson about the word segue. Okay. Spelled S-E-G-U-E. Isn't that painful? That is painful. Yes. So uh, speaking of comedy, right, you talk about having a segue from one joke yes. into another. S-E-G-U-E. 
G-U-E. I think, yeah, I'm spelling that right. Uh, league, one so you know, yes. tongue. And then what is this segue thing? So I just, uh, I think that one's really dastardly. Yeah, I, that makes no sense at all. It makes no sense. There is, there is no, you and can't say, I know why. Because no, you right. don't. No. And then there's the thing that you ride called a Segway, and that's spelled yes. the way you think it should be spelled. And so anyway, there's a lot of confusion around that. There is. Any other interesting words? Oh, any other interesting? Oh, there's so many. There are. Um, <laughs> Go on, then cheat. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think what... I think um, discreet and discreet are kind of devilish. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in the book, I, I talk about the T that comes between the two E's that keeps them discreet from one another. But yeah, anyway, um, did you ask me about, like, favorite words or colorful words or difficult words? What kind of word? Go for one of those three. Um, oh, a I have diffi a difficult word. Difficult word. Well, maybe look at those uh, bookmarks. There's some really... <laughs> oh, these, these bookmarks are absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I, I love the way... And, and they, they're readable. Oh, super. They, they are so clever. Oh, super. Well, anyway. They really are. Look and learn, but it's all done with writing words. It's just really incredibly clever. But they're all pretty difficult and, to And spell. I like some of the word groupings. <laughs> and we talked about that before we started. I'm still trying to work out what um, a syphilis pavilion is. <laughs> And the reason those words are there and why you just said that was because syphilis is difficult to spell and pavilion, I think, is a little counterintuitive to spell. Yeah. But speaking of pavilion, I like the way parallel has those two L's in the middle that are parallel to one yes. another. So that one I appreciate. Yeah, some of the words on here you don't think like a changeable. I wonder how many people forget to put the E in. Sometimes you do drop the E. So spell check might be of service and it might choose to let you. <laughs> spell check is actually my savior. It can be. It Just don't trust it savior. completely. I never trust it. I don't trust computers completely. Right. Because it's humans that wrote the software. So I'm going to trust very little. But it is helpful. As long as I get close. Yep. Because if I'm warm, if I'm in the <laughs> right room is the sure. word, then people sure. forgive me. Yep, yep. But spelling has always been my downfall, always. I've never been able to spell properly. Now, since moving to America, I've got closer. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. But yeah, some of the English spelling is terrible. And of course, a lot of it is, is because of the genesis of where the words come from. Mm -hmm. There are so many French words in the English language, German words in the English language. I mean, it's quite amazing when you see actually how the, the English language is built up of all of these other languages. And when you go back in time and see where all the languages came from, and they all sort of end right. up right at one common point, Yep. Which is, which is incredible to me. Right. And we call it borrowing. We say we borrowed this, yes. but we kept it. <laughs> it's not really a borrow. Yeah. No, when it comes to the French, we just take it. <laughs> how did you get on over in, in London? I had a great time. I had a wonderful time. I uh, lived with a bunch of other people I hadn't met before. And oh, nice. Yeah. I was around Queensway and Baywater. Oh, Is Baywater? That, yeah. yeah. Bayswater. Yeah. Bayswater. That's right. I thought I might have that wrong. It's been yeah. a few years. But yeah, uh, I, I had a really good time. Did you ever end up in the East End of London? And, I guess and, I didn't. And then talk about uh, rhyming slang? I did not, but we, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of that, too. I, and I haven't ever heard people use it. Yeah. For real, yeah. You should explain it. You should explain okay. rhyming slang. Rhyming, rhyming slang, East End of London, it, it all came around because they wanted to form an English language that no one else could understand. So basically, for instance, uh, dicky dirt. I've got a nice dicky dirt on. Shirt. Whistle and flute. Suit. Apples and pears. Stairs. That's rhyming slang. And when you talk to someone from the East End of London that really understands this, oh my goodness, you're going to end up on the floor laughing your head off. Because it's almost impossible to follow, but somehow the brain, if you understand how it's constructed, will actually put it together. It is really remarkable. It's very clever. It really was is. It, was it originally to deceive the police? Yes. That's what it was originally there for. So. Well, yeah, I took a monkey. Well, a monkey happens to be 100 quid, 100 pounds. Oh. 
Sorry, quid. That's uh, <laughs> English. That's okay. English slang for a pound. Okay. Interesting. Slang. Let's talk about slang. England is full. The United Kingdom is full of slang. Yet I hear not so much slang over here. Oh, I think there's Are so I, much. Am I right or am I wrong? I, I think there's a whole lot of it that we don't even think about, right? Uh, I'm, I think there's quite a bit. Oh, really? I do. Yeah. I. I and I. Don't, I'm not sure where I would delineate. I, I don't pay really. Uh, I don't pay attention to this is slang. This is not slang. But yeah, I think it's. Fl are you on? Are you on Twitter or anything like that? I'm on. I, uh, I, I, I'm on Twitter, but I very seldom use it. Okay. Well, the, anyway, there's there's some slang out there. Oh, okay. Do you know about the website Urban Dictionary? Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> Okay, so there's some slang. I mean, some of the words that the kids use nowadays, I have to go to the Urban Dictionary to find out, what well, do they actually live on this planet? And then I have to warn everyone about Urban Dictionary, that it's created by users and it can, uh, it, it can, sometimes people come up with much filthier definitions than are, I than think, are really than, needed. Than are really needed yeah. And you, you have to, you have to approach Urban Dictionary with a little bit of a little bit, but yeah, you know, as long as you as long as you know that, mm -hmm. it can then be very useful. Oh, it can save you. It can um, save you. I for sure. I can think you know, of some terrible situations. That I mean, I've... back in the sixties in the UK, it was easy. It was that swinging or that dodgy. Oh. So you could you could cover any situation swinging, <laughs> dodgy, and that was all started by a comedian. Really? And I, I, I'm trying to desperately remember. I think it was Bruce Forsyth. Oh. But, and if someone's watching this and I'm wrong, write to me, let me know. But I think it was him back in the 60s. And well, uh, Will you define dodgy? Because I heard that used a lot in London. I did. Can you? I'm sorry. Uh, sum it up. Not good. Okay. Failure. Again, it depends on context. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like the English language, one word can mean many things. Right. Dodgy is one of those words. I always thought, it, I think of dodgy as almost like uh, you can't trust a situation, like watch, like things are kind of dodgy there, not really on and, the up and up. And that really is using the word in its correct context. Oh, okay. But you can literally use it anywhere, and of course it all came from the Roman empires. Oh. Oh. Off with oh, his dear. head. Oh, wow. Yes. Huh. And I think two thumbs. Be careful with those thumbs when you travel, right? Like I bet. Thumbs. Well, I bet these things mean different things in different countries. That means V for victory. Okay. That means something entirely different. Okay, so I'm just <laughs> going to keep my hands down. <laughs> I mean no harm. And, and and the funny thing is, with that, Churchill wanted to use the V for victory, mm -hmm. except he thought it was that way around. Oh dear. It really is, I hate to use the word commoner, uh -huh. but we're going back to the 40s now, well, 39 in fact. So all the troops and all the rest of it were in the desert in, uh, I, can't, I think it was, I think it was uh, Morocco, but I'm not sure. And he basically did that to 20,000 British troops. Yes, the second word is off. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you I work out what the first that. word is. I kind of figured. Oh, yeah. no. And do you, that, do you know where that came from? Well, I can sort of imagine, but tell me. The English beating up the French. Longbowsmen, back in the 14th, 15th centuries, they had to practice literally from birth because they had to build up their shoulder muscles oh. so they could draw the string back, draw oh. the bow back, because it was that damn hard. Oh, wow. Because you're talking of arrows that went up to an, mm. a, a great height and then came down on the troops mm -hmm. over there. So it was no good firing it that way. They had to do the arc mm -hmm. method. So if a, an English long bowsman got captured, those are the two fingers the French cut off. Oh no. Oh yes, because they could no longer draw a bow. That's where it all, that's where it all started from. I can't decide if that's a little compassionate that they left the other fingers. Well, who knows? <laughs> or, huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. See? And, 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 what, and what happened was, was that when the Brits met the French again in another battle, probably Agincourt, all the British soldiers are doing that to the French. Oh. So anyway. you think it's true and not apocryphal? I don't know. Okay. I, I'd have I'd, to. I'd like to believe it's <laughs> okay. true because it's just Pretty good. wonderful. Yep.
if you look up, uh, for instance, uh, well, we, we, we talked about the word before off. Mm -hmm. If you look up, where did that word come from? Mm. Did it really come from papers given to sex offenders for unlawful carnal knowledge? I don't believe so. You know, there's a bit of a debate about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't believe so. There's a whole, at least a whole book about, about that uh, word. Just about yeah, that yeah, word. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's, it is kind of interesting that, you know, sometimes the origins, you want the origin to be true. Uh, yeah. But it may not be. It may be something very mundane. Yes. That's a good word. Mundane. Mm. Mundane. See, they're French. Mund. Mund. World. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. Before we close down, is there anything you want to say about your book? Where can people buy it? Do you have a website? A lot of yeses. A lot Go of yeses. Okay. Uh, this book is available at unflubify.com. Uh, that website is connected with my website, which is shinyredcopy.com. Um, what does it cost? $12.99. Good deal. I think so. Because you, so. you obviously have put a lot of research into this. I've, I've done some work, I will say that. Oh, it's also actually uh, available at Miko Coffee Company in town and possibly at Bricks still, but I'm not sure. Okay, so, Yeah. good. What about the bookmarks? Because those are incredible. If people are interested in these, they can contact me and I will hook you up. Any final words before we... Uh... Oh, I would just say that English is fascinating. It's difficult, but it's, it, it's uh, wonderful and rich. And I would just encourage people, if you, if you wonder about a word, look it up. Look up its Absolutely. history. Look, find out how long it's been around and how it's used. And it, there's just, it's so um, interesting. I love it. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming into uh, the you. Captain's Thank Lounge you. to talk about Unflubify. I, th I just love that word. I'm going to use that word over Please and do. over again. Please do. I need to get going because I have to go and put on a new dicky dirt, uh, find my <laughs> whistle and flute, and uh, I'm going to go up the old apples and pears to see, you know, who knows. I'm Nigel Abes, your host. This is the Captain's Lounge Studios. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>